Welcome to Nightline. I'm your host, Pastor Benny, and thank you so much for inviting us into your homes or wherever you might be. What a joy it is to be able to bring Christian television, something that's clean in the air to all of you in this uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia area, and beyond. Thank you so much. We've got some great guests tonight, all right? And you're going to enjoy this. From time to time, we do Skype interviews, and it enables us to go all over the country as well as all over the world. Tonight, we're going to be talking with Stephanie Mann in our, 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 our first uh, hour. She's going to be talking about crime and violence prevention and not only that, she is a consultant in this area. Also, she's going to be telling us about the Safe Kids Network. You, you don't want to miss that. She's coming up in just a moment. All the way from San Francisco, California, we're going to be talking with her. So don't go anywhere. Also, in the second hour, Melissa Norris will be with us. And you don't want to miss uh, what she shares with us about eating healthy and eating whole foods and avoiding all this processed stuff. And you know, I read that stuff and I think, my goodness, if I do what all these books tell me, all I'm going to do is eat pills and eat grass because that seems to be about the only thing good for you. But don't go anywhere. That's in our second hour. And then tonight, of course, Bev McCann's going to be singing uh, both, uh, in both hours. So you're going to enjoy the program tonight. We go to Psalms chapter 46 for our scripture, verses 1 through 3, and listen to the word of our Lord. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. Psalm 46, 1 through 3. We also want to remind you that uh, during the next two hours here at the bottom of your screen, you see our 800 number, you see our local number, and you can access that from any point really in the country, even the world. And uh, you join us on uh, uh, live television, streaming on our website, WGGSTV16.com, and uh, you can follow us wherever you might be. Right now, Bev McCann's going to sing, You're My Shelter. All right, Bev, lead us. I tossed and I turned, my mind running wild with, should I do this or should I do that? It's driving me crazy trying to settle it all until I looked up and saw you're my shelter, oh Lord, most high you wrap me. In only you, I'd find sweet peace in the shadow of my God when I come running home to you. You're my shelter, oh Lord, most high you wrap me
Thank you so much, Bev. We uh, enjoy that music. She's going to be with us in this first and second hour. So don't go anywhere. She's going to be a blessing. That we promise. Right now, our first guest, all the way from San Francisco, California. Join with me in welcoming Miss Stephanie Mann, Crime and Violence Prevention Consultant. We're so glad to have you on Nightline. Welcome. Thank you so much, Pastor Benny. I'm delighted to be here. And would this be a first time to be with us, whether in person or on Skype? Yes, definitely. Well, so this is my pleasure to be well, here. Well, it is ours, and uh, for our viewers who may not be familiar with you or your work, could you just give us just a little background to who Stephanie Mann is and what God has called you to do, uh, such a needed call today? Well, I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. Uh, my father was an alcoholic. My mother was... Uh, well, they got divorced when I was about 10 uh, because of the abuse of my brother. And uh, my mother's boyfriend moved in. And uh, when I was 15, I was abandoned in Mexico City. Wow. Uh, and I didn't speak the language. My gracious. So I had to learn the hard way and uh, how to survive. And God was my teacher. So that's my story. My gracious. gracious. And so today, you are... And I, I want to say I went to, to your website, uh, and, it, and I want to encourage our viewers to go to your website. From time to time, we'll be putting that up there. Now, this dear lady, uh, now she's in touch. Uh, she's in the real world helping children and young people to be safer and live better. The Safe Kids Now, it's a national network. She's going to be telling us more about that. And you see that on your screens tonight. And I want to encourage you to go to safekidsnow.com. I did, and there's so many wonderful insights about uh, um, Stephanie. And I, uh, how did you become a crime and violence prevention consultant? That's what I'm interested in hearing you say. Well, it's kind of a long road. Uh, actually, back in 1969, uh, I was living in a suburbs outside of San Francisco, and we had a crime wave. We were unincorporated, which means we didn't have uh, a city council, we didn't have a mayor, uh, and we didn't have a local police department, wow. but we did have crime. Mm. So uh, as a result of that, uh, we put together a committee of 10 people, and uh, we looked at our own crime problem, and lo and behold, most of our own crimes were committed by our children. Wow. And that's pretty similar in any community in the United States today. Half of the crime problems are our own kids. And this was in 1969? Well, that was when the crime wave started. Okay. It took us about a couple of years to put together a program, yes, which we call the Neighborhood Responsibility Program. And that program was about outreach into the community. And we uh, got our neighbors involved and said, no more, we're not putting up with kids, looting our houses, mm -hmm. uh, and we put on programs down at the high school because at that time, uh, in the early 70s, we had a huge drug problem, much bigger than we have today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of the citizens taking responsibility for the crime in our community, we reduced our own crime problem 48% within My. two and a half years. My gracious. Now, which speaks so much about these neighborhood watch programs that, that you might have. Uh, today, we translate it to neighborhood watch programs. And, uh, and, and so that's what spurned your interest in uh, this crime and violence pre prevention that has led you to become a consultant. Well, uh, as a result of the uh, uh, program that we had, this is the original book uh -huh. called Alternative, Alternative to Fear. To Fear. And uh, that was, at the time, Nancy Reagan uh, was our first lady uh, of the state of California. Yes. And yes. she helped us get that book published through the California Youth Authority. And as a result of that, we got so much publicity about citizens taking responsibility for their own neighborhood safety yes. Uh, yes. that, um, and the police had started a program called Neighborhood Watch 
And of course, this book fit right into it. It's kind of like an idea whose time has come. Right, right. And so uh, people picked up on it. And uh, then I started talking about the importance of neighbors in our different communities throughout the state of California and in other places and universities. So that's how I got started as a crime prevention consultant. Wow. Well, question, what, what needs to change to stop, as an open-ended question, what needs to change uh, to stop the crime and violence in our cities? I know that's a wide open. Yeah, well, there are two basic things that really need to change. Number one, we have a crisis of the spirit problem. Yes. And I mean by that, we have children today that are growing up that don't know how to respect themselves and they don't know how to respect other people. No. That's what I call spiritual ignorance okay. because okay. all of us have the ability to take charge of our spirit. And as a result of that, that's why I wrote uh, Street Safe Kids yeah. because yeah. I wanted parents to know that they can help their child. Um, and the reason I wrote that was I worked with the uh, homeless for four and a half years. Okay. And I was, one day, but let me explain it this way. I was uh, working with the Mother Right Foundation. And uh, we were serving food and we, had, we didn't have enough volunteers. So uh, uh, she asked for volunteers to come out of the group. Mm -hmm. And a young man came out and helped us serve food. And uh, after the breakfast, uh, he said to me, can you help me? And I kind of went blank. I didn't know what in the world. I thought maybe he was going to ask me for money. Right. That's not what he needed. He said, I just, and I learned this over a period of Saturdays, just sitting and listening to him. And I learned that he had been terribly abused as a child. And what he wanted to know is he'd gotten out of San Quentin and he wanted to know, how do I change my life? Wow. Well, at that time, I didn't know what to tell him. So I said to, uh, uh, his name was James. I said, James, there's a church over there in the corner uh, off the park. <laughs> and I said, go over and talk to the pastor. And if he will let us meet in his church, you know, we can, we'll have a group of right. guys. Right. Because that's what he wanted. He wanted to know. And then the guys wanted to know, how do we change our life? So we got him into the church. Now, these are homeless men. We had people that had, were on drugs. We had people that were having some terrible problems. Um, I, I, I don't even want to explain it to you. But uh, nevertheless, yes. we had four committed people that really wanted to change. And with the help of Pastor Flame and Henry, Four of them got jobs, and two of them, we got into drug rehab. So that was a small success, but the steps that we took over the weeks of helping the men get jobs were the, are the steps in the book, Street Safe Kids. Right. And so really, uh, from that experience to today, that was, if you will, the seed that just germinated and just really, with the Lord's help, directed your path to, to have this uh, Safe Kids Now network. Would that be fair to say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you see the government growing, and the government is trying to fill a, a problem they can't possibly fill. I agree. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're trying to throw, and they've, let me say this, they have, we have spent in the last 50 years, $22 trillion, $22 trillion Three, on, okay. on poverty since the war on poverty began. In the Johnson that administration. Is, that's correct. And that is more money than we have spent on all the wars since the Revolutionary War. My gracious. And the problem has not changed. It's, uh, the problem is about the same as it was. It, yeah. it hasn't done much of anything. So when I say we've got a spiritual crisis on our hands, yes. what I'm saying is it's going to be God's will and God's people that are going to be able to turn this around. Right, right. 
And so, uh, really, this is something that uh, all born-again believers need to be aware of, obviously, because we all know whether you're in California or South Carolina, it doesn't matter. Uh, kids are kids, and, and we all have a crime pro problem. We, we, we do. And uh, our, our, our uh, Christian brothers and sisters, they need to understand what's going on, that they can do a, and be a greater role than probably they could ever imagine. Well, let me ma mention this, that uh, in the city of Oakland, I've worked as a crime and violence prevention consultant there yes, for yes. Oakland Police Department. And uh, there are 463 churches. I'm going to say that again. 463 churches. Yes. And if each one would just adopt one block right around the church and reach out and help neighbors work together, they could knit that city back together. And it seems to me that one of the mandates of the church is to love thy neighbor. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if every church, and you know, I'm, I feel like the church doesn't realize its own power. Right. Because right. we have an amazing message uh, for people in this country, and they're not hearing a message. And not yet. No, but I think that will. And, and you know, and, and I hope our viewers heard that, that if a, if a church, you heard about 460 plus, plus churches in the Oakland area, right here in Greenville, uh, we have in our county, we have, if you put all Christian churches together, we have over 500 and we don't even have a half million or there are about a half a million people. Imagine what could happen, um, as Stephanie was saying, if each church would just adopt one block. Isn't that, isn't, That's I heard all you need to do. Absolutely. One block and then encourage people to love their own neighbor. Uh, and, and I mean, look at, look at the, what could happen. It's like a pyramid. <laughs> I mean, you, for me, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? I mean, uh, <laughs> we're not talking about thousands, maybe just a hundred, oh. a little more than a hundred folks. Imagine what, what we could do here in Greenville as she's talking about the, the scene in, in the San Francisco, Oakland, and Oakland Bay area. Uh, I mean, uh, wow, my, my <laughs> it could be, It's powerful. It's very powerful. And I have, matter of fact, if you go on our website, we have a pastor talking about adopt a block because that's what uh, he did in his neighborhood. And he was shocked. Uh, we put together a little group of people yes. from yeah. that church. And this is just a small church in a high crime neighborhood in San Francisco. And these, the people went from one place, what, one neighbor to another. Uh -huh. Now, you have to understand, fear is a big problem. Social isolation is a big problem. So it was, a lot of people were reluctant to do that because they didn't know how to handle rejection. They don't want to have the door slammed in their face. But Christians are, are, have, are courageous. Yes. yes. They went yeah. out and they knocked on the doors and much to their surprise, one of the men, uh, one of the neighbors next door uh, had sort of a um, motorcycle repair shop and they were out on the street and the little church had said we were praying that they would leave the neighborhood. However, when they got to know this, the men that ran this uh, shop, repair shop, uh, they jumped at the opportunity to help them bring the neighbors together and said, you know, we repair cars and motorcycles and we'll be glad to uh, bring our motorcycle club and show the kids about the motorcycles and how to repair cars My and goodness. we'll be the teachers in the neighborhood. And then they went around to some of the other neighbors and some of the ones that uh, were so excited, nobody wants to take the first step. Right. But right. when somebody takes that first step, they're going to find people that will join them, which is so exciting because they were overwhelmed with the support they found. And, you know, and what, what, excuse me, what's so amazing is that, that it's Christian people who are stepping out of their comfort zones and doing the following the biblical mandate of even as uh, beginning in Jerusalem, uh, Acts 1, 8. We're, we're talking with uh, Miss uh, uh, Stephanie Mann, and wow, how interesting this conversation is. We've got more. Don't go anywhere. But right now, 
Bev McCann's going to sing Hear My Cry. All right, Bev. <laughs> Feeling lonely, burdened with despair. I just call your name out loud to calm the storm within. Jesus, hear my cry. will turn to joy when you speak the name of Jesus you have all power within Jesus he Thanks again, Bev. Well, she's a blessing for us tonight, and uh, I hope that you're enjoying the music as much as we are because, I, you know, there's something about when we come into a studio and God can turn it into a sanctuary. We're having a wonderful time, not only with the music, but in talking to Miss Stephanie Mann. She is, as we talk to her right now, she's in San Francisco, California, crime and violence prevention consultant, uh, probably the, uh, the founder of our Safe Kids Now a National Network, but more than importantly, the book Street Safe Kids, 10-step guide for teens and adults. Time to time, we're going to be putting the website. We'll be putting that book up there for you at home uh, to, to see as we have it up there now. And uh, this lady is fascinating. I'm, just, I'm here to tell you, and it shows what one person one person under the conviction of the Holy Spirit power, what one person can do to literally change the world. Talking with Stephanie, talk to me a moment as you, you see all of this, all of the problems with crime and violence. Uh, tell me why, why do we have a drug epidemic? Why is it seemingly coming back on us? Well, there are a number of reasons. Um, you know, drugs have been around for centuries, yes. and everybody should be asking the question, why today? What is going on? Well, this I would attribute to people not having that inner power and understanding that they have 
Anybody can overcome adversity, but they don't know how to find the power within themselves. And that is why I wrote Street Safe Kids. I made it intentionally, not a religious book. I made it a, sp a spiritual understanding book. Uh, for example, how to handle the pain in your life, how to handle uh, anger. Look at, look at all the young people today that are so angry. This is a spiritual crisis within them. Uh, and when people are angry, they blame somebody else. For example, look at the blame they're putting on the police. The police are not the problem. Yes, there are bad apples in the barrel. There are always, uh, it doesn't matter what organization or what company you work for, there are going to few, be a few people in there that are so-called bad apples. It's yeah. the same with the police department. But the way you get out the bad apples is you get involved with them. Right. Right. For example, I was a coordinator for Contra Costa County for seven years, maybe, okay. eight, something like that. And uh, my, our job, and we were a Citizens Crime Prevention Committee for the county, citizens. We created the Citizens Crime Prevention Committee. And the reason for that was that we wanted to empower citizens like we had done in our own community. And they told us the police were against us. They voted against us because they didn't understand that citizens, that they assumed that citizens, if they got some power, they were going to be vigilantes. Well, that's not true. They don't want to be vigilantes, but they have a role to play. And it's very different from the role of the police officer. The police react to crime. Citizens prevent crime from happening. So if you don't have a healthy balance between citizens and police, you have anger because the police have too much power and the citizens feel powerless. That's what you saw in Ferguson, and that's what you saw in Baltimore. Citizens reacting angrily uh, to police and then blaming them. Well, the citizens have to take back their community. And that's what we were doing in our county, getting the citizens involved. And, and to tag that, why do you think even today there seems to be so much animosity towards police? Um, wh well, why? One of the reasons is uh, a lot of these young men have never had an authority figure in their home. Uh, they don't like authority. Uh, well, they've never had it. Right. So therefore, they're angry when somebody tries to tell them they can't do something. Right. So they react with anger. That is spiritual ignorance. They don't know how to be strong within themselves. Right. They don't know how to take discipline. They don't, they're not disciplined. We have a huge problem. And if we don't look at the root causes, we're in really big trouble because a lot of these families uh, have abuse. Uh, we have, uh, gosh, we've got physical abuse, we've got mental abuse, we've got uh, sexual abuse, um, and we've got domestic violence yes. in a lot of homes today. And children are coming out of these homes mad as little hatters. Right. And, yeah. you know, they're creating problems for all of us. Unless we get a handle on it, we're in big trouble. And, and also what I'm hearing you say is that because I think you and I and our viewers realize that because of the demise of the family, of the family right. unit, and not having the, the spiritual um, leadership in a family, uh, not having uh, the, the head of the house as the man, the male figure, if you will, not taking away, away anything from ladies. Um, but it just seems like that... Uh, the more and more uh, people who have, who father, if you will, children are not harnessing the responsibility. They want the title, but they don't want the responsibility. And henceforth, the family is being pulled, almost destroyed at the threads in the seams. Yes, but you know, it only takes one man in a neighborhood to turn this around. And I'll tell you a little story about A.J. Jelani. Yes, please. A.J., uh, lived in this 
well, they call it an Iron Triangle area in Richmond, California. Still lives there. Okay. And he decided 20 years ago, and I've known him for about 25 years, so about 25 years ago, um, he saw a lot of single mothers and a lot of kids running wild in the neighborhood. He decided to become the mentor on the block. Okay. And okay. he became the father figure, the, the person that disciplined them with kindness. He said, I never, he said, I was always listening to them. And he said, they, now at this stage of my life, they are coming back to thank me for staying out of gangs. Not only was he a mentor, but every Christmas he put on a uh, Christmas on the streets. He, he got permission from the police to, uh, uh, you know, be a barrier on the block, meaning, uh, what, what's the word I want? Um, make the block secure right. with barriers. And they had this big block park every Christmas with Santa Claus and different people over the years have contributed uh, they now have a jumpy house, and they have. A, wow. uh, there's always somebody there. One man made a sleigh, and Santa Claus sits in the sleigh, and the kids have their pictures taken. And I mean, he that neighborhood has created what Christmas is all about, mm -hmm. and it's all because AJ uh, decided that he would be the father figure in the neighborhood. Almost oh, like you were saying like earlier, uh, the church but, needs to just adopt one block. Uh, in its neighborhood, and we, you've just shown us the power of, of one man, uh, the good he can do. Imagine if it were a church looking at one block. My goodness. And you've experienced that. Oh, absolutely. Many times. And uh, the church, uh, the people in the church are uh, so excited when they finally get connected because people in the church already trust each other. Yes. And the people in the neighborhood may not trust each other, but when they get together, they build that trust, and you see there's a lot of check and balance on youthful behavior. Right. Now, this is something that people used to do when I was a little girl. Right. If you did something wrong, your people would talk to your mom and say, right. and your mother would be receptive to that. Right. Today, some parents get angry if you try and correct their child. But we need to correct parents and say, you need to listen because they're giving you clues. You don't want your son to end up in jail. Right. Uh, right. I'll give you another example. Yes, please. Uh, um, we had a neighborhood meeting in a high crime area. And uh, it was kind of a medium crime area. And there were two boys that were causing a lot of problems. The boys were seven and nine. Mm. And they were smashing mailboxes. They were pulling up flowers. They were, um, you know, stealing stuff out of garages. And the neighbors were really upset about it, of course. So one man said, well, I went in to talk to the mother, and she slammed the door in my face. Mm. And he wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> and then another man said, yeah, well, I called the cops on these kids. Well, the police officer talked to the mother, and there's not much he could do. You know, the right. boys are seven and nine. Right. Hmm. So what they did was they picked in the, in the neighborhood two very tactful people and said, why don't you go over and see if we can help her out? Let's just talk to her. So they went over and they said, you know, we're not here to blame. We just want to talk to you about the boys. And she burst into tears. Oh, my. And they... She had them come in, and she, they found out that he, her husband had left her. She had been an abused wife. The boys were upset, and she, the boys were totally out of control. Well, the neighbors took these little boys under their wing, and 10 years later, I ran into her, and I said, how are those kids doing? And she said, well, one's in high school, and the other's starting college, and I couldn't have done it without my neighbors. Amen. Isn't that great? I mean, yeah. you know, that it is. And, uh, and once again, you're showing uh, the power of one, be it one individual, one family, or one church, what can be done in the neighborhoods of today and, yes. and, and loving the children. And, uh, and, you know, so many, I'm sure South Carolina 
or California, we have so many broken homes where it usually is the, mo the mother who has two, three, four, maybe even five kids. And if she's working, she's just tired. And there's so many things that we, and you know, these are biblically mandated to not only be good neighbors, but to go into all the world beginning right here, whether it's Greenville, South Carolina or San Francisco, California. And, uh, and, and to go and to take the message and, and taking the message can be so many various ways, i.e. your ministry of uh, changing the lives of children through that organization. Um, and and I'll, we've got a couple of minutes before we go to another song. Uh, but uh, as you, you see all of this going on, what word of encouragement would you give to our, a lot of viewers tonight? What word of encouragement would you give to maybe a Sunday school leader tonight or a deacon or an elder? What, uh, what word of encouragement would you give them concerning reaching out into that community? Don't be afraid. You know, reach out and make connections uh, with people in the neighborhood. And all of us have that ability and it is so exciting. Once we get past our fears and we get past uh, our reluctance to try something new, it is so rewarding. Uh, we've had so many people say, I can't believe I didn't do this earlier. This right. isn't that hard. And we've made such amazing connections. And people will love you for it and, and you will be rewarded. I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you know, some of you are listening tonight and uh, uh, you could, uh, you need to find out more of what Stephanie's talking about. So many of you have called in with prayer requests tonight. We have so very, very many, so many needs. And uh, obviously many are listening to this tonight. And I hope that uh, uh, Stephanie is being able to light a fire under you. If it isn't your church, it might be she lights a fire under you. And you are the one who light the fire under under your church folks, with your pastor or with the deacons or the elders or Sunday school class people. One thing I'm hearing Stephanie talk about is that sometimes before people get involved, it seems to be that the greatest factor is the fear factor. Uh, yeah. But as you've said, once they overcome that, they find out, hey, this is, how can I say, this is fun. <laughs> and they and and they continue. Listen, uh, we're going to come back to talking with Stephanie in just a moment. But right now, Bev's going to sing Bev McCann Thunder. Okay, Bev. <laughs>
the waves come rushing in, He is with us in the rain. When we're sinking in sin, when hope seems hopeless and our life is in distress, He is there to keep us from the flames. Oh, His love will take away. battle for me when the healer was on his way and he got there just in time before I threw it all away he is with us through the thunder when the waves come rushing in he is with us in the rain when we're sick experience and he will keep the flames out of our life. And uh, thanks again, Bev. Boy, great singing and great music tonight. How much we appreciate it. Let me remind those of you, as we said, there are those two numbers at the bottom of your screen. We have prayer counselors standing by. You're calling tonight. They're praying with you tonight, and we're encouraging you tonight. And not only that, you're learning tonight about how God can use you, even as a missionary, if you want to call it, right here, and adopt a block, for example, we've been talking. We've been talking with Miss Stephanie Mann, crime and violence prevention consultant. We're coming back to her. I've got a question for you, Stephanie. What, what can Christians do? Again, another wide-open question. What can Christians do to bring about change in America? Your standpoint. Well, we've got to break the perfect storm for violence that we have now. And we, we as Christians have that power to do that. When I say the perfect storm for violence, uh, I'm talking about we've got children that are abused. It costs us 220 million dollars a day wow. to take care of the children that are abused mercy it, it is disgraceful that we have these problems in this country and what christians can do is break that chain when i say we are in a perfect storm it's not it some of the myths are that police can keep us safe there are only 2.4 police officers for every 1,000 citizens Wow. They can't possibly keep you safe. Wow. So find out what is going on in your community. Educate yourself about what's happening where you live. Right. And then see what you can do. For example, talk to your uh, city council members. Talk to your mayor and say, you know what? We need to get our community involved. And we don't need to blame the police anymore. But we do need to get the citizens in, involved in, in participation. Right. Not only that, we also need to change the media. When you're an angry child, guess what the media tells you all the time? Over, We're educating children on how to be destructive to themselves and everybody else. Absolutely. Yeah, now so, you're going to preach it. I love it. Yeah, I'm preaching. Yeah, preach it. <laughs> preach it. Go, go. Because what has happened in the media, we used to have standards. Yes. My goodness. <laughs> Look where we have gone. But the Christians got to stand up and speak up about this. I would like to see the pastors unite with one solid message yes. about what needs to change. 
And then that will help in, encourage the rest of us to follow your lead. Yes. And yes. I am just so excited that you have, Pastor Benny, have taken the lead on talking about this issue because it's critical right now because Christians are under fire. Yes, yes, but, they are. And Christians are losing their freedoms. Yes, yes. And yes. We need to stand tough. Amen. We need to stand strong. And obviously, that would be one of the many reasons of why you wrote Street Safe Kids. Absolutely. Uh, let me show you. Uh, yes. This is one of the graphics in the book. I've got oh, 132 stories and graphics. Okay. But okay. you see the um, image in red? Yes. That's the bully. Yeah. Okay. And okay. you see the image in blue? Yes. That's the yes. victim. Okay. They yeah. are attracted to each other. The spiritually centered child is strong within themselves, does not become a victim, has a conscience, yes, and yes. is very strong and determined. So these are the kids that are vulnerable. Inside each child is an authentic self, and we have to reach that child. Yes, we do. And we have to help strengthen that child from within. And yes. that is why I wrote Street Safe Kids. And uh, obviously, uh, they can go to your website, and there will be other places that uh, they can find that book uh, as well, Street Safe Kids by uh, uh, Stephanie Mann. Quick question now, coming right off that, why do we see so much abuse, or at least it seems to be so much more abuse today against children than, say, we did uh, 25, 30 years ago? Well, I don't think we uh, have more abuse. Okay. I thought I think we totally ignored the abuse. Uh, hitting, slapping, kicking, whatever we do to children is abuse. Yes. Uh, right now in 19 states in America, you can still use a board to paddle a child in school. Oh, my. And that is... Oh, my. And, and what you're doing, what it's humiliation. Yes. Children need love support, right. kindness, encouragement. They don't need to be suspended from school. I read an article two days ago that said a young man was suspended from school 62 times. Not one person intervened, not one. And I'm going, that is sad. That is tragic. I mean, this boy I mean, will end up in prison. He will for the rest of his life. Uh, and, and probably once he gets in, uh, he probably would never get out. I can't imagine, you know, school districts, uh, but we have that problem here on the East Coast, uh, not taking uh, a more aggressive role to say, hey, listen, we've got to help this guy. Parents, we've got to sit down, or auntie, or uncle, whomever, uh, but someone's got to come to the rescue. Uh, and this is where parents uh, uh, and adults need to get involved in their own school system. Find out what's going on in your school system. Yeah, we need yeah. many more citizens be taking a hard look at what is going on with their children. What's, uh, I cannot tell you how many people use television as a babysitter oh my. because they're scared to have <laughs> them go out and play, but you ought to be scared about that compu that that computer yes. or that uh, TV set that is training your child to be violent, to Ab be sexual. Absolutely. And, and not only that, you know, uh, we have uh, the wonderful thing about Christian television is that we say here from time to time we're, we are something clean in the air. But, you know, uh, there used to be a time I can remember with my own children that we could sit down and watch a television show and I didn't worry. Let me tell you, uh, here is my, I have grandchildren, little grandchildren, small, but yet their mother uh, sits down with them. If it isn't a, a Disney channel, then you have to be careful about that. Uh, you just don't know what that child's going to hear, see, or find insinuations of. And uh, these children are growing up so fast that uh, they may one day wonder, where'd my childhood go? You know, I, I, I worry about that. But you know, uh, we have so many, and, and let me reinforce the fact that we have so many wonderful children growing up in the highest crime neighborhoods. I'll give you an example. Yeah. I was working with Earl, 
and uh, he had a drug dealer on one corner, and he had a liquor store at the end of the block with prostitution around the corner. So he was in a very bad neighborhood. His 12-year-old daughter, Prestina, was always the happiest child I ever met. Mm. And I said to her one day, I said, Prestina, what makes you so happy? And she looked at me and she thought, hmm, nobody's ever asked me that before. And she thought about it and she said, well, I like volunteering at the library and helping the younger kids learn how to use the computer. Um, oh, yes. She said, I love going to church and my mom and dad taught me to be a blessing in other people's lives. Oh, my. And I said, Christina, I know a lot of adults that haven't learned that one. That's right. That's right. So anyway, we have wonderful children out there and they need our support and they need a new message. Yes. And I think that message has to come from the Christians. It does. Beginning in the home, but also the church to give the affirmation to children and the affirmation to moms and, and, and dads. Let me, in your book, you have a, a list of frequently uh, asked questions, I believe. Okay. And I've gone to the book, and, and, uh, and there's a, one question that's listed here, and it, it's uh, open ended, but I, I think it's fair. Can we really stop crime? That's a fair definitely. question. It sure is. Can and we? definitely we can. Yes. Number one, it starts with the individual. You can't you can't do anything if you haven't if you're not spiritually centered yourself. Right. Uh, that's I see. I've been in thousands of meetings, and there are disruptors in meetings. Right. Who want, are angry? So we need spiritually centered people to lead these groups yes um, and we need people to take charge of of their neighborhood and to reach out and help a neighbor that needs help yes. and we need for example community leaders could be doing more if they had a citizens group like I mentioned at the beginning that just looked at how can we strengthen the family yes take a gr group of citizen activists that are really are concerned about this issue and have them look at it in their community yes. and then start addressing some of these issues and supporting it and maybe getting some funding for some high crime neighborhoods yes. where people don't trust each other and they're scared. Uh, so uh, getting somebody that speaks the language yes. and getting somebody that can help bring people together. Our politicians talk all the time about bringing people together. They don't tell you how. No. So I'm trying to tell you how. <laughs> and, and, and we know how, how God's word directs our paths as well. What I, what I really have liked uh, listening to all of our conversation tonight is about adopt the block. That to me resonates, you know, because Good. when you start looking at all of the churches that we have, uh, the Christian churches, our Jewish synagogues, for example, how we could adopt a block maybe where our, our church is in the community itself and really strategize first praying and prayer walking and then beginning a program. And uh, uh, I, uh, what I hear that you've been doing, again, it started with one, with you, and how it has grown into this great network. And uh, we only have just about a, a moment left. Uh, anything you would like to bring to a close in our interview uh, in this last minute, please? Yes. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity. Actually, this is the first time I've talked to pastors. Pastor, uh, I've talked in, in, in our community to pastors, yes. but on television to a pastor. So thank you, Pastor Benny. Thank you. And uh, I would like to encourage people, uh, if they would like a copy Yes. Of Street Safe Kids, I will send them a card free, and they can download it. This is an ebook. If they send me uh, uh, their ad, well, they need to send me their address so right. I can send this to them. Right. And the first ten people that do that, I'd be happy to send this to them. And then, if they would, I'd love to have them take a look at the book and see if you can put in some biblical uh, passages. 
to right. fit the text because I wrote this uh, based on that, which you will see, but I didn't put the biblical uh, quotes in, but right. I'd love to have you do that. So take a look at our website, and uh, I will be happy to send that to you. So I want to thank you so much. And thank and you, thank Stephanie, you. man. You, you've been a blessing to us, and you've challenged us. You've raised our awareness and our acumen of what we can do and what we're capable of doing, not only as individuals, but as churches. And I want to thank you, ma'am, for spending this time with us here in Greenville, South Carolina. And I want to encourage our viewers, please, to go to that website. You've heard her challenge. And uh, take her up on that, will you? Because uh, I, I have so much. And again, go to that website. You can go through that and, and see the many, many needs. Listen, so many of you have called tonight. And we're getting ready to go to our, our 9 o'clock hour in a moment. But I want to offer just a brief prayer to all of these, all of you who've called in. And uh, Stephanie is joining with me, even in a great distance. Now, loving Father, for these who have great needs, their sicknesses, financial needs, their heartache and heartbreak, their deliverances, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would attend and that, Lord, we know that you see and you're aware of everything going on in our lives. We claim the presence and the help of Almighty God who said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you in Christ's name. Amen. I want to thank you so much for being with us this first hour. Take a break. We'll be back on the other side of 9 o'clock. God bless. I'll see you right here. <laughs>